A typical day for us is just so varied and so much fun. And today was a, a good example. This was really fun. We started, let's see, with um, a patient who has a very mild hearing loss, mainly wants to hear her grandchildren, but does a lot of international travel. Um, she was a little challenging to fit in the first six months because she, she's very ladylike and didn't really want to tell us if she was having any problems. We had to kind of pull it out of her. Um, now she's very open about any situation that comes up that she feels a need to have her hearing aids adjusted on and, and uh, we feel that it's a very positive uh, outcome. And then we had a wonderful patient who has inherited hearing aids from a friend who was our patient that that patient, uh, a very dear patient, uh, she she died and it was very sad. But one of the good things is that her hearing aids, with the new technology behind the ear, can be programmed for someone else. This woman, who has had at least three sets of hearing aids, without any success at all, going through different um, hearing aid dispensing practices around town came in with these hearing aids and her family wanted to know if they could be adjusted for her. Um, it turns out that she's really not hard to fit at all and the hearing aids are perfect for her but she had no idea whether what she was hearing was what she was supposed to hear. And so most of the time we have spent with counseling her and her family. Um, it's an Asian family. They're not very expressive with each other about you know, they're certainly very respectful and would never think of saying, Mom, you're not hearing well. So she doesn't get much feedback. So now they are working with her and saying, you know, Mom, you're hearing really well. You didn't used to hear this, but you hear now. Then after all those hearing aid issues in the morning, we saw a, a gentleman, 51 years old, um, who all of a sudden two years ago realized that he has uh, constant tinnitus that would be ringing in his right ear, but not in his left. And he's done, he, he doesn't have a hearing problem that he's aware of, but he's done these things like take his little supplements that he uses at the gym and he can hear it fizz in one ear, but not the other. <laughs> so he came in because he was concerned about why one ear would be acting different from the other. He has a noise exposure history, but no history of any explosion on one side that would explain why one ear was different than the other. It's very important that people be aware that when there's an asymmetry like that, audiologist's duty is to do a full exam to rule out the rare but important problems. Most, uh, the most obvious one is a space occupying lesion on the eighth nerve. And there are a lot more of those out there than are found clinically because a lot of times people don't come in for the exams. Now fortunately most of those uh, lesions tumors, if you will, grow slowly so they don't cause too much trouble, but they do cause the kinds of symptoms that he was reporting, where you get tinnitus in one ear and not the other, and hearing loss in one ear and not the other. So we spent a good hour with him uh, doing uh, the full uh, group of behavioral tests that we could do to rule out anything that suggested that there could be a medical problem involved. As it turns out, it appears that the noise probably is the culprit in his case. Why it's different between the two ears may have to do with which ear was uh, most exposed with all of the shotgun uh, shooting that he did. Uh, but we will see him once a year from now on to just make sure that it's uh, a stable loss and that his symptoms are not changing. He, we also referred him to a primary care physician. He did not have one. And we will make sure that he stays in the medical model as long as that asymmetry persists. Um, then we saw a retired judge who couldn't hear in the courtroom got hearing aids uh, about 10 years ago. They were not satisfactory. Whether or not they were part of his reason for retiring, I'm not sure, but I know he didn't wear them and he was very, very concerned about coming in even though his wife feels that he doesn't hear. He came in, uh, it turns out that he is the son of one of our patients from back in the 80s uh, who we haven't seen because when we retired we lost track of her. Now she's going to start coming in again. She's 99 years old and still going strong. So that was a wonderful thing to happen today. 
Uh, we also were able to fit him with open ear technology, which does not block the ear, which was one of his big concerns before. He has a big booming voice. And he could hear his voice too much. Uh, he's now thinking that the television is going to be too soft for his wife, and he thinks his, so his wife may have a hearing loss and needs to come in, too. It's a very interesting dynamic here. We may end up having that whole family eventually. Followed by that, we had a patient drop in. He wondered what the button on his hearing aids was. Uh, in looking back through his chart, I saw that we have counseled him on that. Sometimes he does have advancing Alzheimer's. We had in the chart a full description of his programs and what they were for. We'd also had a chart note that we had asked him whether perhaps we should disable that button, and he wanted to keep it. So I made him another copy. He was very happy. He was able to practice and walk right through it. And we'll see him again in a week to make sure that he has a protocol for where to put that sheet of paper so it reminds him on a daily basis of what the button is. Uh, we had uh, then another patient come in whose wife has uh, Parkinson's, is unable to uh, voice well anymore. He doesn't have very much hearing loss, but he is her primary caretaker. He is devoted to her. He can't hear her little uh, watch that uh, makes the noise when it's time for her medication many times a day, and he can't hear her. Uh, he was very much opposed to hearing aids. Normally, we would tell that person, don't get hearing aids. If you, if you don't feel like you're ready, we don't think we should fit you. In his case, we felt that there was a compelling reason. He has them now, and he's turning into one of our biggest supporters. He is amazed at what he can hear. He's amazed that they're so easy, that they're not uh, ruining his lifestyle or making him look old. And uh, we're very pleased with the way that's going. And his wife had tears in her eyes. She was so happy about the way things are going. That was very rewarding, too. Oh, let's see. And the last thing of the day was a patient who has been our patient for many, many years. He brought in, I think, six hearing aids, not all of them from us, most of them not working. Uh, we spent a lot of time retubing ear molds. Uh, we put some hearing aids on him that actually may help him hear better because these others he had were not working well or uh, the dog had bitten, had chewed up one. We basically just did an overhaul of his whole situation and we'll see how that goes when we see him back next week. But that's a typical day and it's a, a very demanding but extremely rewarding way to spend your time when you're an audiologist.